So we will call the meeting to order. And roll we'll call. We have President Becker is absent. And I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, this is the point where we don't want to do public hearings for the proposed plans. Do we have any comments to be made? Not this evening. Okay. We will move on to the action item, which is the award of the contract of John Adams Middle School, Mason High School Phase 3B renovation and the elevator addition. And have Terry kind of touch base and review the bids and then kind of give us a reminder of what was actually included in this phase. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, maybe first just we'll talk a little bit about what's included in the project. This is the, um, the uh, Phase 3B Middle School Renovation Elevator Edition. So in general terms, it's for John Adams Middle School. We're doing a remodel of the existing building and then we're adding on a new elevator at the north end of the building. So what does that all include? Uh, new windows and doors, and, and a lot of this has to do with energy efficiency, uh, especially on the envelope stuff, the windows and, and uh, the doors is more of an ADA thing. Um, also includes new mechanical and electrical systems throughout the building, and that includes heating and cooling, lighting, and sprinklers. Okay, we don't have sprinkling in the building right now, so we're adding that and we're going to the energy efficient level. Uh, also includes building envelope improvements, and what does that mean? That would be the exterior walls, we're going to fur those out and insulate them. And again, that goes towards the energy efficiency. And then I mentioned the elevator. Uh, we do have, and, and as we go through the bid, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but there's also uh, an allowance in there for tuck pointing. It's maintenance work on the existing brick on the outside of the building. So there was a need to do some of that work, so we include that in the bid as well. And uh, we also included in, uh, and, and again, as we get into the bid, we'll talk a little bit more about that on the alternate side of things, the roofing system. The existing roofing system on the two-story is three years old. But we thought we would go ahead and get a price for what it would cost to replace the roofing system so we could get back to day one, as it were. Okay, so that is in general what the project includes. Okay, and then I think everyone's got a copy of the tabulation or the bid summary. And we did have four bids. The bids were open uh, last Thursday, March 24th at 2 o'clock. And the four bidders are listed there, Henkel Construction, Holland Contracting, Dean Snyder Construction, and Larson Contracting. In general, those are the four general contractors that are in this area, so they were all interested in the project. And um, going down the left side of your summary there, there's the base bid, there's an allowance for brick, and if you remember, we had the same thing on the Phase 3A project, and that is just for the brick that goes into the work that they have to do, we want them to put in an allowance for that, and we set that at $600 per 1,000 brick. So you can see they've got uh, amounts plugged in for that. Then there's an allowance for brick repointing, and that's the tuck pointing that I talked about. Then there's a footnote that keys you down to that, 2,500 square feet. Allowance uh, number two there, brick replacement allowance, and that is um, as we're in there doing repairs and doing tuck pointing, we're probably going to find some damaged brick, or there's going to be some that are cracked. They're just going to need to be replaced, so we'll take care of that. Uh, in that allowance. Then there were four unit prices, one for removal of unsuitable soil, one for granular material, and that basically is material that would replace the unsuitable. And we had those same two items on the last contract as well. Uh, unit price number three was for light fixture replacement, and this would be for random light fixtures around the school that weren't necessarily part of the contract, but if we say gee, we need to replace that one, or we need to replace that one. We've got a unit price to be able to do that, okay? And then the last unit price was for rock excavation, and that just has to do with the, the, the areas that we do have to do excavation. It's probably gonna be the elevator uh, would be the most logical place. 
if we do get into subsurface rock excavation, we want to have a unit price for that. So we did the same thing on, on the, we actually did the same thing on the phase two project. And we actually did encounter some rock. So, so that was a good thing that we had that. Then there's two alternates. One was for new lockers. Um, the, the contract is set up so that the existing lockers could be refinished. That is, they could be stripped, they could be repainted, or we gave the contractor the alternate of uh, furnishing new lockers. And so we wanted to get a, a price for that. So you can see those costs there uh, for that item. And then alternate G3 was replace the existing roof system. And again, that was just to be able to get some prices there so we had sort of a guideline on uh, what the comparative cost would be. Again, we're three years into it. The roof is still under warranty now. Um, but if we wanted to start over with a brand new roof, these would be the numbers for that item. All the contractors acknowledged that they had received the addendums and they had their bid bonds in order for the bid opening, so that all checked out. So as you can see, the base bid and really the consideration I think that, that you folks would have today would be on the basis of the base bid. <coughs> and so Henkel was the low bidder at 8758000 Holland Contracting was second at 9047000 Dean Snyder was third at 9167000 And Larson Contracting was fourth at 9324850 So, any questions? Can you just remind me, sorry, this also includes the build of the dining area for Jam Adams, is that correct? Is that included in the space, the new dining area? Yes. Wasn't that in 3A? Oh, that's Knuckle. I'm sorry. That, that, yeah, that's in the Knuckle? That's Knuckle. Oh. <laughs> that's in 3A. Sorry. Okay. She's right. 3A. 3A. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember if that was part of this one. Yeah. <clears throat> so then at what point are we going to be looked at that decision with the roof? When would we have to make that call whether we need to do it or not? I, I would think we can make a decision now. We just wanted to see if we wanted to get back to square one fresh again. And the roof's in very good condition. We just need to you know, decide if that's what we want to do. Which I, maybe what I'd ask, Todd, is what, um, what's the normal life expectancy that you guys are experiencing on your roof? We, we see a 15-year rotation on most of our, of our roofs, so we've got a good long time before that roof would need to be replaced someday. And there's nothing we're going to do with the remodel that's going to cause that to no. be... We will have some roof penetrations, and that was a concern. It's a, it's a unique system, and it's an air ballasted system, and we will be poking holes into it, so we have to make sure that the roofing contract or the mechanical contractor is fully aware of the requirements for the system, because it is a special system. And uh, we're cognizant of that. We're going to make sure that we, we do that properly. So. Are you recommending that we leave the roof as it is I think so. for now? Yeah, I, I would recommend So this was just in here as an information in case we wanted to, to do that. What we would be approving today is just the base bid, and then these other items are to be decided individually? Well, actually, uh, it's all part of the contract, but in general, the allowances, uh, unless you decide to just don't want to. Well, the allowance for the brick, we have to have that in there. Uh, the repointing would be one that I suppose that you could uh, decide one way or the other. Um, it's but the it's, included, it's included in their bid. Is so the lockers a piece we need to decide on? Really, it, it kind of comes down to that. I'm just curious, how did, I'm just curious, how did the bid, how does their giving us new lockers make their bid less? I, I just didn't quite track that for income. Are they well, going to resell the other ones? Is that, or we use the other ones somewhere else? Or they could, they could salvage them. Um, the fact of the matter is, they would have to refinish them. So they're already in place. So they'd either have to thin it, refinish them in place, which means you know they've got to protect the areas around it from damage or paint or overspray that sort of thing. Or they would actually have to remove them, take them off site, strip them. Refinish them, then reinstall. Them. So it's actually almost so it's it's cheaper, 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 cheaper than it is to do all of that. Yeah. That's how it comes out. That makes sense. It does not be live in either. Okay, I'm going to hang up. We're here. Can you hear us? Oh, is that Anita? That was Julie. That was Julie. Oh, it's Julie. Anita, are you online? 
I'm here. Okay. Hello. Hi, Anita. Hi, Anita. <laughs> so I think to get back to the, the, there is a decision that probably needs to be made on the lockers. Um, and I don't know, I might defer a little bit to, to Todd. I know we've had a lot of discussion about those existing lockers. They're really in pretty good shape, um, even though they've been there for a long time. Uh, they're a very, very durable, well-constructed locker. Um, we, you know, in our discussions, we just don't see a problem with continuing to use those. Uh, but, but we also feel that the new lockers that we specified, and they had an option of several different manufacturers, we did feel like they were good, comparable lockers. So it's not like if you went to the new lockers that you're going to get something that's a lesser quality that you should have to be concerned about. Here's my question. So, can we can we repaint them ourselves? We've done that in the past. Yes, you? we have many times. In fact, that's kind of the norm around school districts during renovations is if they have a locker system that they're confident in and, and like, durable, heavy duty, and, and performing well, that's what they do. There are several contractors out there that come in and they actually refinish the lockers in place. There is no removal. There is no tearing them down and, and refinishing and bringing them back. They do them in place, and it's an electrostatic process, high quality paint, and they, and they look dynamite when, when they're done with them. I know the ones in the schools that we've redone, they really do look nice. And, and the cost them. associated with it, the, the cost is minimal compared to taking the locker out and taking it off site yeah. and, and sandblasting it and so forth. And either Terry or Todd, tell me what the what our architect's estimate was when we, when we created this, as far as what the bid For the was. project, 10.4 million. Competitive, very yes. competitive. Yes. Right. And that's sort of been the, what we've been experiencing for the last packages as well. So, uh, one thing to get maybe get back to the lockers, the the base bid price does include refinishing the existing lockers. Okay, so it's just that if you wanted to save five thousand dollars, you could go with alternate uh, G G one. Okay. So the refinishing is included so, if we want brand new ones that would save us five thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me about the referring and, and correct me if I'm wrong, didn't we talk about and maybe this is what you mean by that, I don't the term of art escapes me, but you're talking about actually working from the inside out, moving the taking stuff out of the inside of the walls and putting in um, insulation there rather than taking the brick off the outside. Right. So we would just fur out the inside walls with, you know, furring strips like, I suppose I could relate it to if someone was going to remodel a basement, for example, mm -hmm. you would just put your furring strips up, we would use a polystyrene insulation, and then a new wall covering. And then the other thing that that does is it provides us uh, a little bit of space that we can get electrical work back there. That's a the big so, uh, That's what I thought we had talked about. Rather than trying to, to move the outside out further and take out all that brick, we thought about working in, but it's going to make some of the walls a little right. bit smaller, but we have room to yeah. do that. Because yeah, right. most of those yeah. rooms yeah, in the world are losing that much. Yeah, it's right. not a lot, but those rooms are usually a little oversized anyway, so a few inches to get electrical and telephone and wire and the right. stuff in there. And then, but just because of the windows and everything else, there's going to be some bricks that are going to break. There's going to be some tuck pointing that's going to be done. There'll be some of that, but the tuck pointing is more just kind of the building in general, in general. the exterior of the building Cleaning in general. Up. It just, you know, there's a few areas that need a little bit of work, and so we want to make sure that we have that included. But I think my confusion, and I think we were talking about the brick, really this is more, the brick is more just whatever you need to fix and, and redo, not not because you're taking off all the brick. No, I mean, no, no, that didn't correct. seem like anywhere near That's enough right. money to take <laughs> and, and we have a tuck pointing schedule mark in our anyway. in our district anyway. And what's happening is that the, the, the John Adams Senior has a golden opportunity because we're going to have the scaffold there. The windows are coming out. You're going to have the masons there. It's the perfect time, cost wise, too, because we get a, a, a lesser rate at this time. To, to there's, do the we looked around it. There is a lot of pieces that are showing their age, if you will, mm -hmm. like all of us. Well, I guess my thought at this point, I don't know how everybody else feels. I, I'm not sure that I'm uh, excited about either one of the two alternates at this point. I suppose it's just the base bid, but if somebody feels different, I guess I'm certainly open to suggestions. I mean, I think the exterior of the lockers will look fine. I don't know what the interior of the lockers, I think that's where we start to see the wear and tear and, you know, 
that's the piece where I would make it a, if we can save $5,000 to put new ones in and have, yeah. you know. And they're comparable quality. I would go with the new ones. And they have locks? Yes. But you have to remember, we have had trouble with the new locks. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I think the first well, we didn't have them. That's yeah. my <coughs> concern. Are we going to get? Because I know what's in there. There's some definite uh, things that I look at in a locker, and really, I have not viewed any of the new locker spec specified yet. In other words, I, I specify three certain brands, and even manufacturing. Uh, process has changed over time, and it's been four years since I've looked at any new lockers, and I'm not really comfortable in just saying, yes, we need to go get a new locker. We probably should see a sample prior to making a final yeah. decision, and, and that's just... And we do answer. clean the inside of those lockers every year when we go through and empty them out and yeah. clean them, but it is isn't a, you know, we don't paint them or anything right. like that for the most part. The particular brand in there now is all steel. They're 18-gauge steel, and they are extremely heavy. And durable, and you just can't purchase something like that anymore unless you order them special. And, uh, well, you can get inside of them and jump up and down if you're small enough, and you can't damage them. They're just built that well. Well, could we approve this with yeah. the idea that the locker part would be research after, yes. after you've decided good, if the new good, ones would good be idea. worth it? Good idea. Are you okay with that? Sure. For me, how about the roof? Are we okay with the roof? Where is that? Mm -hmm. right. Anita, do you have any additional comments? Uh, no, it's, it's been a little difficult for me to hear because there's noise on the bus, and, and, but it sounds like you guys have been talking about what are we going to do about lockers, um, and it sounds like we got really competitive bids, so I'm, uh, I'm very excited about that. Okay. How'd you sleep? <laughs> Mark asks how you slept on the bus. Uh, on what? Mark wants to know how well you slept on the bus. Uh, not as well last night. However, uh, it seems to be fine now. <laughs> so but we're doing we're doing great. We're in Indiana and uh, should be home soon. Uh, kids uh, received the gold award and they were the highest scoring choir. They sang better than I've ever heard them sing. Wonderful. Ninety-eight out of a hundred. So that was great. They just, they they represented themselves and they were sitting very very well. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and thank you for taking care of all of this. Um, I feel, you know, just, I know that the survey's been working really hard on doing all these things while I've been gone too, and I really appreciate the teamwork that we got. So. so kind of what we're leaning towards right now, Anita, is that we would accept the low bid um, without the alternate for a new roof, and that we were going to hold off on a decision on the lockers until Todd can get us some more research. Okay. Okay, that sounds, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. So if that's what we agree upon, I would entertain a motion. I move that we accept the uh, base bid of Hinko Construction um, without alternate G3. That we accept alternate G1 subject to review of, um, I guess, locker conditions and replacement um, quality. Thank you for mm -hmm. time. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Entertain motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. aye. Thanks for your time, y'all. Thank you, Anita. Have a safe travel home. Have a safe trip. Yeah. Yeah. See you soon. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. She's braver than me. We did that one. We did the we did the chaperone thing once, and I could not sleep. sleep. I could never sleep. And it wasn't because the kids were loud, because they were acting first for three nights to six in the morning.